The Leia Heil Pan Show. Sponsored by Step Finance. Your go-to DeFi portfolio manager on Solana. Luno, if you're just getting into Bitcoin, it's the perfect place to start. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Leia Heil Pan Show. As you can see, we are here in beautiful Miami and I have a very interesting guest. It is four-time kickboxing world champion, entrepreneur, I'm gonna go through the list, okay? Four-time kickboxing world champion, entrepreneur, um, he owns a bunch of casinos, made some, I don't know, like multi-millionaire. You introduce yourself better, I, I can't do it. Okay, uh, yeah, basically all <laughs> the things you just said. Yeah, four-time kickboxing world champion. I guess I'll say I'm an entrepreneur, multi-millionaire, all-around nice guy. I agree, all-around nice guy. All-around nice guy, and yeah, we're here in Miami, so. Good, good to see you, young lady. Good to, meet, good to see you again. It's always good to see you. All right, let's go into this because this is going to be totally unfiltered. I have a bunch of topics that I want to go into. Um, for context, we met about over a year ago, I think it was. Yeah, we've known each other a while. I've seen you out in the Twitter space, like taking over and flexing on them. I've, yeah. seen, your, I've seen your little videos, like is Bitcoin going to go up or down, da da da, and you do well and you're, you're growing and that kind of thing. So we've known each other a while. Yeah, yeah. And ever since we met, I've had a bunch of questions, um, and I'm not going to filter, and I'm not going to filter anything, no sugar coat. So I want to jump straight into this. So you, might, so, so you might hurt my feelings. Is that what you're saying? Basically, okay. basically, that's what's going to happen. You see that, people at home, you see? Don't let this, the pretty face fool you. She's out here to break my heart, hurt my feelings. So I've got to be careful here. Don't let the tough persona fool you. All around nice guy. All right, let's jump into this. So one of the biggest things that you're known for is women. And um, it's it's nine thirty in the morning. We're talking let's about do chicks. It. We're talking about chicks. I'm happy to do it because look, one of the first things that really confused me about you when we met was the fact that you're not a one woman man. Okay, that's not completely true. Explain. It's, it's not completely true. I'm not saying I couldn't have and and enjoy the company of a single female for eternity. I'm saying my point is that truthfully, if we remove all the garbage and the fairy tales, if men are true to their biology. No man is completely and utterly a one woman man. That's my point. There's a societal expectation which has been placed upon humanity and then we have a biological and evolutionary imperative and the male evolutionary imperative is not to have one female. Now there are some dudes out there who are gonna disagree with me but those are dudes, they got low testosterone, they're not the big G, they ain't got no money, they ain't nothing, right? That's different. But any man who's actually in a position of status since the dawn of human time, every single king, every single sultan, all of them, had more than one chick. That's actually the natural human state. So the point I was trying to make is, even though I am a man of God and I try and keep myself close to Christ, right? Because I'm such a we'll get to that. because I'm such a nice guy. My point is, any man who has the means to attract or solicit the company of more than one female likely will enjoy this the company of more than one female. Does that make sense? It doesn't. I, I respect it. No judgment. Okay. The confusion that I have is. You're jet setting, right? You're here, you're there, and we'll get to that. But how does that work, right? Because at the end of the day, women want love, emotion, and attention. And if you're jet setting, and if you have multiple women, how, how, how does that work practically? I don't have any women. It was just an observation. I don't have Let's any women. I'm like, I'm, Let's be honest. I can't lie. No, um, I know what you're saying. Women want love, and they want attention, and those kind of things. And yeah, I travel the world. But I really don't think that it's difficult to uh, maintain a relationship purely based on, if, 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 if the connection is true, then the physical presence doesn't have to be as prevalent. Let's put it that way, right? There's lots of soldiers go to war and they have a wife at home who, who loves them very But much that's different them. because they're going to die for a cause. Let's just I'm say- I'm going to war. I'm out here in the streets. How do you think I'm making all this money? But what do you do? But like, you're not fighting a battle. All I do is fight. My life is a fight. What do you mean I'm not fighting, fighting a battle? I'm fighting, fighting a battle against the oppression of humankind. How I'm, are you doing that? I mean, how am I doing that? I'm, I'm the only person who didn't coward out at the beginning of this imaginary scamdemic. I'm out here literally resisting the enslavement of man. What do you think I'm trying to make all this money for? More cars? No. I'm making money specifically so that I am, to a degree at least, ungovernable. I need but I, you, on a, but that's on an individual level. And that's I take care of my people. <laughs> this is Which what people? I, my people, so this is what I mean. It's not like I'm out here doing nothing. I'm out here on the streets, I gotta go to Miami, I gotta see you, gotta get this done. From here I gotta go to Dubai, make some more money. I'm running around the world. I'm doing very, very important things. And if I had a female, if I did, because of course I don't, because I'm a man of God, blah, blah, blah. If I had a female, she would have to be very understanding of the fact that I am a man on a mission with a purpose. 
And you know, some, there are some missions should be allowed to come with me on and some missions she can't come. It's not safe for females out here. I'm out here, I'm all right. Yeah. I managed to get here. Cause you're next to me. I got you, I got you, I got you, Leia. You're okay. But uh, you know, but, but otherwise you gotta be careful. Women are, you know what? And I don't want to look like a misogynist as usual. Misogyny is, is like, is okay to a degree. Okay, Just, what degree? Let me know, give me a number out of 10. I think it depends how we're defining misogyny, right? Yeah. Like how would you define misogyny? Realism, realistic. Mm. A lot of misogyny is just realism. Mm. You know, like if, if you're a realist, then to some degree you're going to be a sexist. But is that sex? So is that sexist or is that just being real? Right? Because like if it's a fact. Yeah, exactly. Then is that sexist? Exactly. So uh, I, I personally, I don't like traveling the world with women. I think it's one of the most frustrating things a man can possibly do. Why? Okay. Imagine you had to travel around the world and you had to take a three-year-old with you. You'd be like, and now you go, where's my three-year-old? Has it eight? I have to make sure they're safe. Got to bring all their stuff. It's exactly the same with the chick. Me and my brother, we're Spartan, right? We can just go, rock up at an airport. Ah, oh, there's no flight for 11 hours. Sleep in the airport terminal. Don't eat, don't sleep. One bag on our back. Old school soldiers, we don't care. With a chick, it's all, oh, I need food, I need water. Oh. Oh, where's my stuff? My case is 55 kilo. Oh, I forgot this foundation. I need to find this foundation. It's, it's horrible. I do agree. Women, like if, if, I, if I haven't eaten, I'm not good. Yeah, so women are effectively children. And well, no. Yeah, we're see, no, so we're we got there. No. We're, just, we're just different to men. We're not children. A, ch a child couldn't sit here and have this conversation with you. Women have to be monitored and maintained and maintenanced effectively like a child would when it comes to Not travel. like a child. Yeah, same, exactly the same. It's the same. It's so, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, listen, me, if, if I'm going to go Iraq, Afghanistan, all the places, and I've been to these places, I go with Tristan. We're battle ready. Okay, you hear listen. the AK go off, we, we start running. Like a chick will all be standing there. Ah, oh. nah, No, that's true. Nah. What would happen if you didn't have Tristan? My life would be drastically different. I think that all men, in fact, I'd say the actual plague of Western nations today is that all men lack a natural masculine support network. I don't think it's just about me having my brother. I think it's the fact that most men out here don't have a genuine masculine support network. They don't have men around them that they can not so much confide in, but men hold other men accountable. It's very easy to be brave when every man you talk to is brave. And it's very hard to be brave if none of the men you speak to are brave. But what would you do if you didn't have Tristan? Well, then I'd have to get a masculine support network outside of Tristan, which I've already done and created myself, so it does exist. But um, I don't think it would completely change who I am, but certainly having my brother was important in my formulative years because if somebody like, didn't like me or something didn't like me, it didn't matter because me and my brother, we didn't care. We're, we're big, we're hard to kill, we don't, it doesn't matter if you like us, right? So. One of the things I like about you is that you didn't come from money. Correct. And so you're very real. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Thank you, you are real. Thank you. You did a video where you were like, I'm out camping. I don't need all the luxury. I don't need all this ambiance. Yeah. So um, people don't know that. So talk to me about that um, growing up. Was it Luton you were born? Uh, no, so I was born in Washington, DC. Oh, America. Yeah. yeah, and I left when I was nine and I grew up on a council estate in Luton. In yeah. Luton. Yeah. You grew up on a council estate in Luton. Council estate in Luton, yeah. And From the ghetto. From, yeah, that is the ghetto. Yeah. That is the, the, the English ghetto. So yeah. talk to me about that though. What was that like? And how long were you in, in that kind of situation? Yeah, so I, I left America when I, was, when I was around nine and I lived in Luton until the age of 26. Ish. Oh wow, till you were 26. Yeah, a long time, yeah. But I was kickboxing, right? My, my fight gym was there and I was fighting from there before I finally managed to get out. But I grew up in a council state in Luton and I am so thankful for it. The best possible thing that can happen to somebody is to be born broke and become rich. If you're born rich, life's terrible. If you're born broke and you stay broke, life's terrible. But to be born broke and become rich is a beautiful thing. Because truthfully, money really isn't all that interesting. What's interesting about money is thinking back to all the times you had no money. I love to go spend twenty-five thousand dollars for dinner, not because the money. Twenty-five thousand dollars for dinner. All the time, yeah. Anyway, not, right. yeah, no, but yeah, all the time. We're in Miami. Where you been? Great places, but I'm not putting down twenty-five k for dinner. Because you're a chick, and females don't pay anything for anything. They don't in Miami. They don't pay anything. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But anyway. this is, yeah, no, women don't have to pay, right? But there's there's certain places you can definitely do that. And the point is, the food isn't worth it, and. It's not worth 25 G's, but the whole fun of it is just thinking back to when you never had 25 grand in your life. I never had any money in my savings account. I was completely flat broke. So it's the juxtaposition that makes it interesting. There's no light without dark. So I love the fact that I was poor. Those are some of the, in some ways, they were some of the happiest times of my life. Life was simpler back when I was poor. I'm not gonna buy into more money, more problems. I'm not gonna say that being rich isn't fantastic, because it certainly is. 
However, when you're broke, you have a very simple singular focus, which is what well, it should be just to make more money. But now my focus is more spread out because I really, I really do not need to make more money. That's the one thing I do not need more of. But there's so much more to this story, so I'm not gonna let that go. So there was hardship, right? And of your course. dad wasn't always around. There was a story with like the hair, and he Correct. gave you a, the whole haircut, and Correct. he told you hair doesn't matter. Correct. All this like really formed you. Yeah. I wanna hear about it. I wanna hear about the hardship. Okay, well, the hardship, my whole life was hardship. And, and to some degree, I try and make sure my life retains some degree of hardship. Mm. Uh, my, my father was the OG. I was raised by probably the best father on earth. I really genuinely but believe But he wasn't that. around? It, it, but a father doesn't have to be around. This is a big mistake. This is another big mistake, especially among the conservatives and the trad cons and all this crap. The idea that a father needs to sit around like a second mother to make a child healthy is, is a fallacy. In fact, I'd say it's detrimental to the child. I see all these dudes out here, they have a kid and they basically become mother number two. Why? The mother keeps the child alive. As a father, it's your job to be impactful. You need to guide, you need to be a role model. You need to be a superhuman. Everyone should look at their father like a superhero. That's mm -hmm. what you should genuinely view him as. It's hard to be a superhero if you're home every day arguing with your wife changing diapers. That's not what a man should do. A man should rock up, teach lessons, be impactful, and it's more about quality as opposed to quantity of time. I saw my dad once a month. He was out on the streets, he was pimping, hustling. My father was a chess grandmaster. He's traveling the world playing chess. He had all his girls, he's doing whatever he's doing. When he came home, it was an impactful time, whether it was a positive impact or a big argument or whatever. Never was I ever around my father. It was a low energy environment. That's not who he was as an individual. And I remember every single second spent with him. There's a whole bunch of dudes out here and chicks. Their father's home all the time, fine. But if you're home all the time, you're gonna lose to a degree your mystery. It doesn't matter how cool you are as an individual, if you're home all the time, always, you're not gonna have that magical power as opposed to, whoa, dad's home. I'm telling you, the biggest mistake fathers make is that they let the woman convince them that to be a good dad, they need to be there all the time. That is a complete lie. Fathers never did this. We were always at war or down the coal mines or away working. This is the way it's always been for, the, for humanity, right? The men were away doing important things. Now the man's at home changing diapers, like a punk. Why does that mystery matter? Of course it matters, because life is mystery. Life is a whole- It doesn't mean anything. That, that's, that's just a lot of um, beautiful, exciting words. Li life, life is absolutely mystery. I'll tell you why the mystery matters. Because for a female to retain her attractionness to a man, there has to be a degree of mystery. That's the first thing. So we're talking about a household where even the woman truly respects her man. There's a bunch of dudes out here, a bunch of people are married who are home every day, low testosterone levels, they're cucked out and they're gonna disagree with me. Fine, but it's the truth. A woman is more attracted to a man who gives a little bit of mystery. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine we went on a date. Uh, Let's imagine, yeah? And you asked me my job. And I said, oh, I do this and this and this and this. Like, no, oh. no, no, what would you actually say? You wouldn't say this and this, give me. No, I, wouldn't, I would never tell a female my job. But let's say so I, what would you say? Let's say I run casinos. I own casinos in Romania, right? Let's say, so I picked you up. We're in, the, we're in the Lambo. We go out for a nice dinner. I say I run casinos. Alternatively, you say, what's your job? And I say, I look after my people. That's my job. <laughs> but the point I'm making is the story you're going to construct in your head is actually going to be more interesting to you than the truth. You're going to say, well, my man just 25 grand on dinner, pulled up in a $400,000 car, looks after his people. What does that even mean? And it's going to be more interesting to you. When you watch a horror movie, what, what scares you is not the ghost that's on the screen. It's the thing you don't see. It's just walking and there's noise, you don't see anything, and then bang, it comes out of nowhere. That's how human mind works. A degree of mystery is extremely intriguing to the human mind. So it's extremely intriguing to the female for her man, it's the first thing. And it's also extremely intriguing to the child to, for their father. Dad's home, oh no, the whole dynamic of the house has changed. Everything's shifted, dad is home. Yeah, he's I been know. away and now he's home. Whether it's positive or negative, that has an impact on you, it has a, a genuine effect on your psyche. I see so many fathers walk in the house and the kids are just playing a video game, dad walks in, they don't give a shit. Is that, is that parenting? Are you a good dad now because you're home every day? That's why all these dudes are punks. No one, no one can question what I'm saying when it comes to being a father or parenting because I was raised in a very specific way and I'm one of the greatest men on the face of the planet. So I, I know it works. I'm the product of it, right? So if I had a son, it would be my duty to be out here, traveling the world, making money, having impact, being a fantastic individual, that is the primary focus of my existence as opposed to sitting there with my boy all day, every day. I can come home every two weeks with a story, boom. And he'll be like, that's the boss. It's like, yes, dad is the boss. Is that a minimum or like a maximum? So for example, you said just come home every two weeks, your dad came home every month. 
Do you think there's a time, an amount where you could be away too long? No. Really? Not, not really. I mean, it's hard to quantify in a very, very specific, yeah. quantifiable way, right? It's hard to quantify. But the point is, if you make a large enough impact, you could see your. I, if I had a son, I could see him once a year. But my son should want to emulate me. He should want to be me. He is me. So I have to live a lifestyle which is worth emulating. This is the difference between kings and peasants. And this is the problem with the world today. 99% of the men, including 99% of the men who are going to watch this interview, all the crypto dorks, all these dudes, all these losers, they're peasants. They have a peasant mindset. When a king had a son, he wasn't staying at home changing diapers. He was conquering new lands and going to battle for the name, for the bloodline to set an example for his son to graze into, right? Dad's out here, he's conquered this, he's built this castle, he's out there, he's slayed those people, killed those people. I'm the next, I gotta go do something. That's how a king raises a son, by example. A peasant raises a son the same way a female raises a son. What the fuck is this not parenting? That's not being a dad. It's, 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 it's not being a dad. This is all new age garbage, and it's, it's the, the femme-centric mindset which is controlling men to the point where they can't be honest amongst themselves. And I'll tell you another thing, and this is a study that's been done. The higher your testosterone level, the, la the lower your natural interest in babies. This is an actual I study. I can imagine that. Yeah, it it's a study. Sense, yeah. And what happens is when a man sits around a baby all the time, his testosterone level naturally decreases because it makes us more tolerant of the screaming, of the crying, woman's moaning. It's hard to be around all that crap when your testosterone level is high, right? So. Especially as a man, if you decide to be a second mother, to some degree, you're chemically castrating yourself. You're losing your superpowers anyway. If you have a high testosterone level, you should want to see your children. You should love your children. You should protect your children. I'm not saying you shouldn't love them. I'm saying you should pick them up, have fun with them. Wow, love you so much. Been two hours. I'm out. See ya. That's how a father raises kids. He doesn't sit there all day, every day. That's new age garbage. It's not real. But given what women want out of a relationship. Women don't know what they want. Ah, here we go. They don't. Women want things that they, women think they want things and then they get them and they leave the dude. Women, women don't have a clue what they want. I want a guy who's sweet and sensitive and takes care of my needs and thinks about me, but blah, blah, blah. They're all out there. None of you are with them. Why? Because women don't want that. Women don't actually want that. Women want to be with a man they respect. Women are only going to enjoy the time with and end up feeling in love with a man they genuinely respect. And unfortunately, to be respected, some of the qualities are detrimental to the overall relationships, let's say happiness. I know loads of women who are with a dude they hate, but they respect him. Like, I, uh, he makes me so mad, but he is the G. And they stay with him, as opposed to the woman who's like, well, he's so nice to me, but you know, and leaves. Mm -hmm. So women need to respect you as a man. How's a woman gonna respect you as a man if no other girl wants you? How's a woman gonna respect you as a man if you're putting her above all your boys? How's a woman gonna respect you as a man if you're not here in the streets making money? How's a woman gonna respect you as a man if you don't respect yourself or other men don't respect you? Respect is linked to fear. How's a woman gonna respect you as a man if people don't fear you? This is the problem with all these dudes out here, all these dorks, man, especially in the crypto world. I'm saying crypto because you're a crypto girl, right? These nerds will make a little bit of money and wonder why their chick still leaves them because you're just a rich nerd now. You're, you're, you're still a dork. You can still raise your voice and nobody give a shit. I'll still run up on you and take everything you got. Mm. Like you have to be a man worth respecting. And that's extremely difficult to do. And, and if you're gonna do all those things, it's very, very hard to become a man worth respecting, sitting at home, changing diapers. And even if you just make money on your laptop, it's not enough. We're so from what is it? So what is enough? So other than, other than um, you know, not changing diapers um, and you know, jet setting around the world, what is enough? You talk about being, tall, muscular, you can shoot guns, all this stuff you talk about, right? Yeah. Some people aren't tall. Yeah. Naturally so, tall. What would you do if you weren't tall? All right, so firstly, firstly, let's accept something. God has favorites. <laughs> does he? He certainly does. Okay. And I'm one of them, okay. as are you, my dear. Look Thank at your you. nice, beautiful smile. Thank he you He gave so it much. to you, God gave it to you, yeah, right? So God does have favorites, but it's not even about that. For the longest period of human time, for a man to be respected, for him to even be admired by society on any level, to some degree, he had to be a warrior. That's what men did, we fought. Right. That's what men did, we fought. So if you're out here as a man and you have no battle in your life, no conquest in your life, no form of war in your life, then what you do? Then? And it doesn't have to be physical. Physical is the best example of it. Every woman wants a boxer or a cage fighter. Of course you do. Like well, everything. biologically, yes, because it means that like, if, you know, for me, everything is evolution, right? Completely. So it means that 
if you know one day the government's coming, which yeah. they're coming, yeah. um, you know, you want to know that he can physically protect you and the family, yeah. right? Exactly. So every woman wants a boxer or a cage fighter, but this is to testament to the problem of the modern world, right? Right. Every single man watching this knows that women want fighters. Every single man watching this would love to be able to say he's a fighter, but 99% of the men watching this will not go fight because they are afraid. They're all cowards. They'll make up every excuse under the sun. Oh, I was busy with my Bitcoin. Oh, do, do, do. You're all a bunch of pussies. They are pussies, all of them. That's all they are, they're pussies. And, and women can smell that. So if you, want to, if, if you want to have a woman who truly respects you, you need to put yourself through war in some form. Now, what most men do is they avoid physical confrontation because they're cowards and they start doing fiscal confrontation. This is why men are so obsessed with money because mm. it's a degree of conquest. We can no longer walk the earth and conquer land, right? It's not like we, the olden days where we could just walk around as the Romans and just chop somebody up and take their land. So now we conquer the land financially. This is why men will work so hard to be a CEO and give up his whole life just to be a CEO because then he gets to feel like he's conquering something. Men have that innate desire for conquest. So that's the second best thing, I guess, is to get rich. I mean, it's not a bad thing to be rich, certainly not. But if someone were to say to me, look, you have to build the archetype of an individual. You have to build a man from the ground up and he has to be respected by both men and women. He'd be a dude getting in the cage, kicking the shit out of people. Mm. And every man knows this and every man can do it, but they're all just pussies. We suffer from modern society and all of its problems suffers from the fact that we are plagued by monumental cowardice amongst the male population. All men are cowards. They're cowards. It's, it's, it's literally mind blowing to me, the level of cowardice we're forced to endure. Everyone's a pussy. Everybody. Why, Why? because it's been, it, they've been deliberately designed to be pussies. The femme-centric systems has deliberately installed frames in their Which mind. Which femme-centric systems? Every right? single system is femme-centric. That's quite interesting because there's obviously the idea that we have this patriarchy, which I don't believe in, but now you're literally saying it's the complete opposite. Oh, it's absolutely. We have a matriarchy of oh, oh, completely. Name a, name a system which doesn't favor the female. Every court of law, the justice system, the, the legal system, it all favors the, system, it all favors the female. Even, even men, we biologically are designed to favor the female. I'm telling you, if you're a police officer and you turn up and a woman's crying, you instantly to a degree think, oh, this guy might be, you, you, there's a degree of guilt because we are designed to protect females is how we feel, right? So all the systems are femme-centric and the culture is femme-centric. Everything we just talked about, a man, how he's supposed to raise a kid, that's gonna be mind-blowing to some people. And they're gonna think, this guy's crazy. Mm. I should be at home changing diapers. Bro, you're supposed to be a warrior. You're supposed to be a warrior. You're at home changing diapers? Um, okay, so there's this meme, which is, um, bear with me, what is it like? Good, was it like strong men create? Um, what is it? Strong men create good times, good times, good times create, create weak, weak men. men, weak men create bad times, Correct. and so on and so on. Correct. Are the strongest men of history, were they at home changing diapers? Did their wife tell them they weren't allowed out? Because we have a kid and I need help, but did it, or was he out there getting shit done? And this is the point. So, a lot of the things I say, people may disagree with them. People may say, I don't like the idea of that. Even some women may sit there and go, oh, that's wrong. There's a whole bunch of beta males who are going to try and pretend it's not true. Mm, but it's the absolute exactly. reality of Earth. It's the absolute reality of Earth. It's the truth, right? And it's very, very hard to be a man worthy of respect if you're going to stick to these femme centric systems. We're suffering from monumental cowardice on every level. The entire male population, from the complete bottom to the absolute top, is corrupted by cowardice. Let's talk about um, something you mentioned earlier, um, the scam. Sure. You guys know what we're talking about. I don't want to raise any red flags here, protecting sure. the, the good old algorithm. Sure. So you have some interesting views on that. You, as soon as um, everything started and everything was uh, yeah. shutting down, yeah. picking my words very carefully, yeah. you started running, basically, you and your brother. Correct. So I hold the record, and I will state this here publicly, I am sure I hold the record for the, the, the quickest reaction to the lockdown. Because there's a lot of people now who understand that the things we were told may were not necessarily true. It took them a while. What is not true about what's going on right now? All of it. Every Can you single, be more specific? The, 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 the danger factor, the number of people who are affected by it, the reactions that we take and how they should have a positive effect, everything. It's all a psyop. Every single level of, of the entire, I'm trying to be careful with my words, yes. every single level of the entire environment is corrupted. Because we live in a world now where everything is corrupted. I was saying this to someone the other day, there is nothing fair or just about the world anymore. Every single system, from the police, to the judges, to the governments, the tax, even the World Health Organization, even the doctors, mm. all of it is corrupt. Head to toe, all of it is corrupted, all of it. So the whole thing is a scam. And I 
like to think I hold the record because at the very, very, very beginning of lockdowns, all the people now who are, who are anti-mask and anti-lockdown, they all complied. They all cupped out and got scared. Ooh, the cold. And me and my brother, we put it on Twitter, you have to timestamp. Within three seconds of this garbage, we're on planes flying to Sweden and Belarus because they're the last countries without lockdown. And that's basically because we took the brave choice. My brother and I sat there and had a conversation. We said, this virus might be the real deal. We might get really sick. Oh, you, you actually thought for a moment- Well, back then it was when the people were dropping dead on TV, the Italian hospital's full. It looks like right. a real deal, right? Stuff was coming out of China. Yeah, it looks crazy. Yeah, okay. So how do you know what to do? But me and my, my brother concluded, well, we don't know what to do. So let's take the bravest possible choice because you can't hide from a disease. It's gonna be here forever. It's gonna get us eventually. So let's make the bravest choice. Let's die like men. Let's charge at the gunfire because we're not cowards. Turns out we went to Sweden for two months in a, in a wide open country partying nonstop while everyone else was locked in their houses. And we realized, oh, everything's fine. Now, if every other man did that exact same thing, we wouldn't be where we are two years later. The reason we are suffering because we are suffering, suffering the way we are suffering is because of the monumental cowardice of man. Revolutions are nothing more than men standing in one place and complaining and screaming. Can't even get men to do that anymore. Too how busy. Do we, do they're too busy. Out? They're at home with the kids. Oh, my wife said it's my dirt day, dirt day to babysit. But it's more, it's more, Peppa it's, Pig. It's no, more it is. than that. Yeah, no, it's it, so much more. Th that's funny you say Peppa Pig, actually, because Boris Johnson was talking about Peppa Pig the other day. Boris so Johnson, go. listen. No, but but other than children and staying at home with the family, all how, of do it. We, how do we stop what is All of going it. On? Leia, my dear, it's all of it. This is what I'm trying to say. You, 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 we just started this interview and you said it's unusual that I say a man should have more than one female, right? To you, No, that not unusual. I just, well, it is unusual. I just don't necessarily, it's not what I'm looking for. So for me, I'm just like, Ugh. I'm heartbroken. That's okay, <laughs> I'm <laughs> no, sure. But, no, but the point I'm making is everything translates, right? It's a spider's web. If you're gonna find a man who's truly warrior minded, who's truly conquest minded, who's truly hard to govern, is he going to get one chick and let her tell him what to do with his, his life? No, he's going to be that guy who does whatever he wants. And, and this is where we also tie into loyalty because loyalty is a completely misunderstood concept. You value oh, loyalty. Oh, loyalty. Absolutely. Yeah. But male loyalty, masculine loyalty is completely misunderstood. All these dudes out here who are at home with their wife thinking they're loyal, you're not loyal. Loyalty is having options and returning to the same place, not mm -hmm. only having one option. They're very different things. If I walk into the store and they only sell apples and I buy an apple, I'm not loyal to apples. I don't have a choice. Loyalty is walking in the store where they sell all the fruit. I buy apples six days a week. Occasionally I get a big fat pineapple and I go back to apples the day after. That's loyalty. Without choice, there's no loyalty. So most of these dudes okay. and most women who say he's loyal, he's loyal, he's lame and he can't get nothing else. That's not loyal. Loyal is a dude who has all those options and still is in love with you. That's what loyalty is. So masculine loyalty is completely misconstrued and misunderstood anyway. The truth is about most of these dudes who talk about being loyal, they couldn't get something else if their life depended on it. Nobody wants it. So I, when I talk about a man having multiple women, I'm not even saying he's gonna be a disloyal man. I believe, I know a lot of men, who don't have to talk about me. I have some friends who are some Russian guys, they're multimillionaires, they have a wife, she's beautiful, she's in a Bentley, she's living the good life. When, you think when the Russian mafia are out to play, he has no chicks? You think he ain't running around with a bunch of Barbie dolls? No, of course he is. But he goes home to his wife and his wife's like, he can do what he wants. I don't care about them. I have the family, I have the kids. And she's smart and he's smart and it's a happy environment. Only here in the West are you gonna try and find a mafia boss and say, you're not allowed to do that. Come on, he's a G, he's a G. I respect it, I respect it, I understand it, but from my, just for me personally, I just don't think that's something that I could Yeah, you're living, in a, you're living in a fairy tale, my dear, because you, that means you have to compromise. No problem with it, because most of these chicks out here and most of these dudes out here do compromise. Everyone watching this compromises. I say this all the time. If you were rich when you met the partner you're currently with, you wouldn't even be with them. You think you love your wife? No, you don't. Because if you were a multimillionaire, you wouldn't have ever even got with that chick. So everyone to some degree compromises. If you're saying that I value sexual exclusivity above everything else, that's fine, but you're gonna have to compromise. If I, want, if I want the most reliable car I can buy, I can't go into the Ferrari garage and say it has to be reliable. They're like, go buy a Toyota then. This is what comes with a Ferrari. You get the performance, you get the beauty, sometimes it breaks down. That's how it goes, that's what comes with a Ferrari. If you want a top, top, top tier man, he's gonna do certain things. And most women intrinsically know this. If you go to one of these parties in Miami, and one of these chicks is chilling with Chris Brown. Do you think she believes he's gonna be loyal? No, it doesn't matter, it's Chris Brown. Yeah, I don't touch Chris Brown. Okay. It was just an example. Ugh. My point is women intrinsically understand that a certain value of male that they're not gonna get sexual exclusivity and they don't care. 
They only so try and I, get that crap from beta males. It's only a beta male they try and, okay, well, you're not allowed nothing out there. When you're really I real understand G, and I agree with you oh. to a very large extent. However, I still want to prove you wrong one day. You're that not, is, listen. No, listen, I will prove you wrong you're, one can, day. You can go out there and find the biggest bad boy you can find who is loyal to you, which is fine. But the fact that he is sexual exclusive to you means that for some reason, we don't know why yet, there's a human metric in which he does not excel in every form. So you can go out there and like I said, Toyotas are more really reliable, Ferraris are unreliable. You might go out there and get yourself a nice BMW. That's sure, that's fine. I'm not saying he doesn't exist. You can go get yourself a nice BMW. I don't like BMWs. Oh, well, well that's, what, that's, what you're, that's what you're aiming for. No. But when the Ferrari pulls up next door, when I meet your dude, i am be like, yeah, he's all right, but how much, what, less than 100 mil? Nah, come on. Well, he's a broke I'll, 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 he's I'll a prove broke you wrong, I'll prove you wrong. And maybe he'll have money, but he'll, he'll lack somewhere else. So this is my point, is that the, the, the true masculine, in, true, in the realm of true masculine excellence, one of the benefits of such is sexual exclusivity, because females, you have, the, you have so many choices. Most men out here have no choice. And the very few men who are at the peak of the human experience of a man have all the choice. And to find a man who has all the choice, which is extremely rare amongst males, like less mm. than 1%, and say, you're gonna be with me and me only, it's hard, it's hard. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? I'll it's prove difficult. you wrong. I'd love to prove you wrong. And look, it's on the cards. We'll talk about this I in hope a couple you, years and we'll see how, I how I hope you on. have a happy marriage. I'm not saying you're not gonna find a nice guy. I'm not saying you won't find a guy who won't be loyal to you. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying, that there's I understand. compromise. I understand. We'll see. There's we'll compromise. See. We'll see whether we compromise. There's compromise. I want to go back to talking about the, the lockdowns and everything like that, right? Sure. Because it's getting absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of um, people hate when I say this, but I believe it, so I'm going to say it. There are a lot of um, resemblances with 1940s in terms of us and them 100%. and, um, you know, creating a second class system 100%. of people. So, how do we get out of this? Because all tyranny does eventually come to an end. Does it? Well, we see it happens again. History doesn't repeat, but it rhymes. Yeah. That's the best thing that I've heard recently. I yeah. think it, it it's amazing. Um, but how do we then come out of it? I'm not saying in a hundred years we're not going to go back into it. But yeah. I'll be dead. Yeah, you'll be dead. Yeah. What do we do? My boy will be on the streets. Don't worry. That's why I mean. That's why I have to raise him right. Because right. you're the next warrior. You class. have a boy? No, but I'm going to make about okay. twenty. So don't worry about it. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a difficult question. To be the pessimist in me kind of thinks that this is different than all the other tyranny they've tried to enact before because they have a technological advantage and they're, mm. getting, they're getting to the point where they might be able to ensure via technology that they can keep a degree of tyranny existing. I really, part of me, not scared, but part of me is pessimistic in regards to the fact that they have the tools now to, to put things in place which are gonna be extremely difficult to break. Mm. They're gonna put paradigms in place that are gonna be extremely difficult to break. I've lost all faith in humanity. I didn't have much before this and now I've lost it all. Like really, genuinely. and. The biggest mental shift for me has been before all this crap, it was the BLM riots and Trump and all this stuff and everyone was screaming, all cops are bad. And I'm like, no, come on, we need the police, you know, law enforcement. Da -da. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna change sides. All yeah. cops are bad. Why are you enforcing this crap? Yeah. It's insane. The police are the police are the out here, the ones actually cracking skulls. It's amazing that a very few elite can tell another select group of the slaves to go and enact tyranny upon the other group of the slaves and they're gonna obey. Like this could all end overnight if the police would wake up and say, no, that's not fair, but they won't do it. So all cops are bad. So I've lost faith in the law enforcement systems. I've lost faith in the judicial system. I've lost faith in governments to the point where I sold all my real estate. Did you? I, I, yeah, I refuse to even hold real estate under a government. I hate them so much. Every single one of them. I can't stand any of them. They're all corrupt from head to toe. You think you own a house? Oh, you own that house, right? Go piss off the IRS. Tell me how long you own the house. Some cops are gonna turn up with a piece of paper and you're out. So you don't own anything. The whole thing's a scam, the whole system's a scam. And you're talking about how it's gonna end. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna end. My, my answer to all of this is your organization that I control and run, The War Room. Our, or, what we do in our organization is we try very, very hard. We prepare people to be adaptable. So in regards to their finances, in regards to getting multiple passports, that kind of thing. Because Darwin said it, it's not the strongest that survives, it's the most adaptable that survives. We're here in Miami right now, right? If Miami locks down, I'll bounce. Mm -hmm. I'm that guy, I can, I can live anywhere. I can go to Tokyo tomorrow, live for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I think the smartest thing you can do in the current times is try and prepare yourself or try and construct a life which allows you to be adaptable because nobody knows what's coming next. I don't know what's coming next and nobody knows where to be. It's very, very hard to be proactive in such a chaotic environment. You need to be reactive. Mm -hmm. And that's what the war room's all about. So I'm trying to save myself and my people 
That's the first thing I'm trying to do. I'm not really trying to save the world. No. Because a lot of these people out here, they deserve the slavery. You deserve it. I, listen, at the beginning of this crap, when I saw all the masculine influencers on Twitter, the whole manosphere, everything, when I saw them all, all be pussies, all, everyone, you all deserve slavery. Oh, now you've changed your mind. Now you're anti-mask. You think I forgot. I look stupid. Elephants never forget, right? And it's easy to be brave now. The sentiment has changed. That's not being brave. That's just going with the flow. The bravery was required at the beginning. When me and my brother were getting arrested in Germany for refusing to wear masks, you were at home tweeting pro-mask. All these losers, all of them, all the conservative, all the right wing, all the masculine, you were all cowards, all of you, and you all deserve the slavery which is gonna be bestowed upon you. If I, if I had tweeted something pro-mask, I would be issuing a public apology each week. I am sorry for the, I'm sorry for the fact that I aided in the enslavement of man by believing the propaganda machine. Mm. I apologize. Yeah. I was part of the problem. These guys aren't even sorry. They're just gonna sit there and start now changing it and tweeting anti-mask and thinking that nobody notices. You're the reason we fucking got here. I lost respect for so many people. So many people I actually respected. I lost respect for all of them. No warrior blood, cowards. How are you gonna roll next to me, be my boy, if you're gonna fall for propaganda program, yeah. how are you gonna go to war together? How are you gonna go to war? How are we gonna sit in a police interview if you fall for propaganda programming? If you listen, police can arrest me today. If they come in and say your brother said this, I'm like, no, he did not. Yeah. Shut up. But with you, with you pussies, I might be thinking maybe he was pro mask last week. All you men are cowards. Most of the people out here deserve the slavery, and I really do think that there's gonna be a social split even worse than before in regards to the rich and the poor, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have people who have absolute freedom and people who have complete, I think it's gonna be polarized. Mm. It's gonna get worse than ever. Yeah. Have nots and have yachts. And I'm on the right side of the equation. So worst case, I'll be in my jet doing my thing. So worst case, I know I'm okay. And I just have a duty to protect the bloodline. But man, I, I don't wanna be pessimistic or nothing, but when the rally call came at the beginning of the battle, mm. I stood there by myself. I stood, me and Tristan are standing there like, where is everybody else? And you, you can, I don't need to name names. Anyone who's on Twitter, every single masculine account you can think of, all the big strong men, the red pill, alpha, all the conservatives, da da da, all cowards, all of them. You can go through their accounts and see all of them cock out, pussies, all of them. It's crazy, and that's how we got here. So what can I do? I'm just one man, Leia. I know I have these superhuman powers. I know I look like that guy, but I, even I have limits to my abilities, baby. There's only so much I can do. I think you're totally right. We, what we're gonna see is um, like the, the middle class just gone, right? Completely. It's gonna be the absolute have -nots, freedom. Have nots and have yachts. Have nots and have yachts, there you go. I wanna be part of the have yachts. That's the goal. You are, you will be. You will be. Don't worry. So you, so you, you spoke about um, getting rid of all your real estate. Yeah. Um, and I understand that, and I really understand the um, the pessimism you have and the um, like the deep hatred towards the system. I un I understand it. Yeah. You said something really funny actually um, a, a few years ago. Um, yeah, you said to me um, when you had nothing and you were living in America, yeah. they couldn't help you. But as soon as you left, the IRS knew how to get hold of you. Oh yeah, they for sure. knew how to call you. Oh yeah, yeah, they they know how to find your ass when you owe them money. Yeah. But it's it's never the other, you know like if they owe you money, it takes months and months and months to turn up if ever, yeah. right? But if you owe them money, it's a woohoo, you better pay us. The whole thing's a scam. It's like the entire financial system, which we can discuss at length. Yeah. Our entire financial system is designed to steal wealth from the poor and just turn it into numbers on the screen of the Destruction rich. Destruction by design. Yeah, oh yeah, it's, the whole thing is corrupt. It, and when you understand the system, you understand that the system is rigged to a point where most people do not stand a chance to ever, ever win. So let's talk about this. In what way is it rigged? It's rigged because, and I, we can go down the economics of it all. Yeah. But my, but my, my very basic premise of it is, is that there's a whole bunch of people out here who are effectively slaves. And when you're, a, you're a slave if you have a job in, in any form, mm -hmm. effectively. Some slaves are better paid than others, but most people are slaves. In the days of slavery, what would happen is the slave masters would use control and aggression and influence to convince you to do work for free. So what they could do is they could get work out of you with something that they can generate from the sky, right? They can be aggressive from the sky, influence from the sky, a couple bullets are cheap, whatever it took, and they could get your labor. Now we have the exact same thing, but they just use fiat. They use fiat money. If the people in charge of the world can print unlimited amounts of said thing, and you'll give up your life for certain amounts of said thing, then they own you, they control you. Oh, you need $100 to do this, print. Off you go, slave. It doesn't matter, it's not real. So who cares? So the entire world's a slavery system to some degree. Maybe you can make enough of those dollars and buy your freedom, as I have, right? But in general, it's a slave system. And anyone who's out here who 
still believes, because it seems to be there are some people who still believe in like saving up and save my money and mm. if I'm really diligent and I get a mortgage and in 28 years I might own the pro. Man, it's a trap. All of it is a trap. Have you ever met a rich person, asked them why, how they got rich and they said saving? No. No, this is the biggest- Sleeping floors, I worked so hard, I sleep I, so many and floors. I sa and I saved it. And I didn't have that morning coffee, you Yo, know? Yo, complete lie. And everything they teach you about financial literacy is a lie. Everything they teach you about wealth creation is a lie. Everything they teach you about what you're supposed to do with your money and how you're supposed to think is a lie. They get your ass in debt at the very, very beginning. So how did you education. realize all this? How did you realize all this? God has his favorites. No, how did you realize God this? has his favorites. God can instill potential into an individual, but doesn't mean that the individual is going to um, fulfill that potential. Something in the environment has to happen. I operate with divine purpose. Absolutely not. So, <laughs> how, so how did you realize all this? I just, you know, I, I've always my entire life. So I was, my father was a chess grandmaster. I was yeah. a chess player. So at the age of five, I was Indiana State chess champion. And when I was eight, I was on my way to become a Fede master. So I was one of those child chess geniuses. I never actually ended up becoming a, a chess master because we moved to um, England, my father stayed in America, blah, blah, blah. But I've always been good at pretty, at pretty good at analyzing the chessboard. And even from a very, very young age, I just understood, and I don't know exactly where I got it from, I understood the world is a scam, all of it. I was walking to school one day, walking to college sixth form with my four friends and a Ferrari went past. And I was like, yeah, I was like, bro, how do we get one of them? It's like, oh, don't know. So what do you mean, Dunno? Doesn't it bother you? He has 400 grand for a car. Doesn't that anger you that he has 400 Gs for a car and our parents are broke or on a council estate? They're like, I guess. That's the average man. Like the average man has no fire inside of him. I'm 16. I couldn't sleep for three days because I saw a Rari. I was like, I want a Rari. I, I want one. Yeah. Now I have four, right? So this only is four? Only, is only four, but I have 22 oh. cars as a whole. So only 22? Only 22. Oh. Sorry. I'm sorry. I hope, you, I, hope you meet, I hope you meet a rich man one day. <laughs> but um, the, but this is the exact point, right? So I always had the fire inside of me. And what happened is, growing up in Luton, especially all the the Asian boys who were driving these fast cars, when you go to a petrol station three in the morning and a Lambo and a Rari pull up, you know they're they're down dealing drugs. Yeah. Like you don't look at them and go, ah, oh, he worked hard in school. Mm, no, no he way. Got that age. He, yeah, no, exactly. So you, so I always had an intrinsic understanding that the the only way to truly get rich is to break the system in some degree. So when I was going to school and the, the school was trying to purport a system, they're trying to uh, convince me that the system is the best way to have a successful life. I was sitting there going, but everyone's living life I want broke the system. I, I don't believe in any of this. The final straw for me is I actually did very, very good in my A-levels. I was supposed to go to university. I got an A in business after only three of the five tests because I aced every single one. I did this advanced test, this distinction, got a distinction in this, da, 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 and I was offered uh, free university in the UK in Ascot. Oh, in Ascot. Ascot for business. It was free. So cool, I get to go to uni for free because I'm such a clever motherfucker. Good. So, um, but then they asked me to do a personal statement. Oh, I hated that. Yeah. So hated did I. That. So I'm like, personal statement? You already said yes to me for free. And who's going to read this? Hi, my name's Andrew. I like to kickbox. Da -da. Who cares? Like, you've already said yes to me. So it's during tutor class. I'm arguing with my tutor saying, why well, don't I need to do a personal statement? They already said yes to me. Then she's like, everyone has to do one. I said, no one's going to read this junk. She said, everyone has to do one. I said, you know what? I won't go then. Mm. That's how stubborn I was. My mom went crazy. You threw away free university over a personal state. You could have just wrote one. You could have done it. I was like, listen, I'm going to be a kickboxing champion. Don't worry about it. Right? So. When stuff doesn't make sense and you're doing things for no reason. But there, there was a reason. The reason to me was that no, was. No, the personal statement. Doing yeah. a personal statement doesn't make sense. Of course. Right. And, and, and I saw that as a genuine infringement. That was oppression. I, mm. I can't accept that. No. No, I, don't, I know I'm smart enough and, and I'm stubborn and I've always been stubborn. I'm like, no, I'll be fine without your university, without your personal statement, goodbye. I must've been the only person to ever throw away free university in the UK, but I didn't go. Best thing that ever happened to me was not going to university. Thank God, I was a four year head start. Mm. Everyone's out here in uni, I was making money. I started off with a really basic, boring job. I was carrying boxes of ice in a fish market. You know, I wasn't doing anything elaborate, but at least I was working. At least I was getting up at five in the morning, running to work, working all day, running to the fight gym, fighting all night, running home. This is what I, res I respect. This yeah, I didn't have a car. Yeah. My family didn't have a car, right? They, they was literally just run. I used to run nine miles a day to get places. I had to get places. I just run. So like, I couldn't wear nice clothes because I get sweaty, right? So I was this guy who used to wear a tracksuit, a t-shirt, take my t-shirt off so I didn't sweat too much and just run everywhere around Luton. You just see me, the crazy oh, guy, just man. running. I really want people, if you don't know Luton, please look up Luton. <laughs> it's, it was bad. Yeah, I grew up in a, in a bad place. 
But um, I so wait, what did you do though? You the, you the you went to the fish did you say fish market? Is that fish what you said? Market, fish yeah. market. You were kickboxing. Correct. And then what did you do? Right, so I, I don't want to know how you made money. You want to know the whole story of how I got rich? Yeah. Uh, it's a really long story. Every, every time. But yeah, but I, I've always had, the point is I've always had that fire inside of me. I've always had that desire inside of me. I think every man is born with a masculine fire. I think it's certainly the reason why so many things in history happen. It's the reason why so many arm, armies tried to conquer the land. That, mm -hmm. Look, like, why? Why would the Romans wake up and look in a random direction and say, let's go over there, whoever's there, let's kill them. That's inside of men. There's something masculine about conquest, right? That fire has been dampened. It's been dampened by distraction and consumption and all these things. But for me, I think the fact that I was so broke, I couldn't really distract myself. I couldn't consume anything. I couldn't buy anything. Like, so what do you do? It was either a life of crime or a life of punching people in the face and getting paid for it. So I chose to get paid. And um, yeah, the, the original question is why I resisted the system. I just, I could feel all these little triggers my whole life of the system trying to oppress me. And every single person I saw living the life I was aspiring to was outside of the system. Even now, to me, now I consider myself outside the system. I, I'm outside the matrix. I can say what I want. You're gonna get me fired? Ooh, you're gonna do a, you're gonna go, go get me fired. Anyone who's triggered by this, get me fired. Good luck. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I love living outside the system. I always aspired for it. So that's the simple answer. I, I, I really think that I have to be careful what I say on YouTube. Yeah, I don't want to get this taken down, no yeah. demonetization. Yeah. I have to be careful what I say on YouTube, but any man out here with any kind of money, you have my network, which is the War Room, which is the premier network in the world, and besides us, I don't think there's anything else, but you need to be very, very understanding of the fact that if you're going to stay inside the matrix and be a fully law-abiding citizen for the next 10 years, you're going to get crushed. Yeah. You're going to get crushed. You need to either get another residency to another country. You need to get political connections. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, you, everyone saw my Twitter during this, these lockdowns. I traveled to 30 countries during lockdowns. You all partied. Because, I partied, yeah. yeah I saw I, so all because I knew somebody. I know somebody everywhere. I had a guy in Russia who get me a business visa through his company to go to Russia during That's the close. I, I know everybody, right? So with my connections, my network, and the number of passports I have, which is in excess of 10, I can do whatever I want. On those passports, how does it, how does it work? Okay, so. Like, is your actual name on it? This is YouTube, my dear. I, I want to know how it works. <laughs> this is YouTube. Can you tell me after? Can you tell me? You can tell me, and then tell me the rest after. <laughs> no, but but it's no, kind no, no, of how, like I want to know. I want to know how it works. You can give I'm me. Not, give, all right, I'm not Give me the okay. subtle. Give me yeah. the subtle yeah. version. I, okay, so I'm not plugging my organization. But one of the first things we do in the war room is we have a we have a, a specific section and a construct that helps people obtain multiple residencies. Okay. Because and the reason that's so important is because if you only have one passport, then one government has jurisdiction over your life. Correct. And I don't trust any of these governments. Now, the idea of living off grid is outdated. The idea you're gonna to go to some hut in the forest and sit there with a bunch of guns and that, it's not real, right? The new world order's here. We're all plugged into the system. The best thing you can do as opposed to living off grid is to live on as many grids as possible because that allows you that allows you a lot more flexibility. In the height of Corona, when I was traveling around, when I wanted to go into a country and they said, you're not allowed in the country, Americans are banned. English people are banned. Swedish people are banned. Ah, Romanians are allowed in. Yeah. Cool. So I, I'm the same guy, right? I'm just whipping out passports. Wait, but is your name the same on all the passports? I really wanted to know that. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> the war room is, the war room, the organization I run, CobraTape.com, that's something we specifically help with. And it's very easy to do. There's ancestral roots. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of roots. It's not hard. It's just a bunch of paperwork and headache. But we have a team, we have lawyers, we have people who can help make all that happen. So if you're a man and you have any kind of money, you need to be realizing that a degree of that money is worth spending on trying to obtain freedom. And to obtain freedom, you need to have as many passports as possible. Okay, so we'll talk about the passports after, clearly. Got it, okay, I'll learn all about this afterwards. Yeah. So let's talk crypto. Um, you're very rude about um, the crypto people. Uh, you know, okay, am I rude? I don't wanna be rude. I don't, okay. be, I don't wanna be rude about crypto people. Yeah, I like them, I'm a crypto people. Yeah, you're, you're a crypto person, yeah. And, and, and I'm not, I know a lot of crypto guys who are cool. I have a lot of good friends. Yeah. I've made a load of money with crypto. Yeah. I love a pump. Chain and, link, right? Yeah, I bought like loads of them. Yeah. I caught Soul at like $6. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I love I love crypto and I love a crypto pump. Everybody does. When I say detrimental things about the crypto community, the point I'm trying to make is that many people out here, especially men, are not prepared for wealth. And when I say they're not prepared mm -hmm. for wealth, they haven't been through the struggle that's going to allow them to become a man of caliber before they find money. They haven't done the running to the fish stall, running to the gym, getting punched in the face for money. They've never done that. So what happens when a 19 year old kid catches a crypto pump on some junk like Shiba? Now he's a millionaire, fine. But a few things have happened. First, his ability to work hard has now been destroyed. He'll never work hard again, right? Because look how much money he made on with blind luck. 
You think he's ever gonna go out there and get a job and take a, a pay of 50 grand a year and really dedicate? Never, even if he lost all that money, the only thing he could ever think to do is to just try and get another pump. Mm -hmm. He's a gambler now. He's yeah. effectively a gambler for the rest of his life. So his, his whole work ethic's been decimated. That's the first thing. The second thing that happens when someone like him catches a crypto pump is because he has no life experience, no real world experience, no struggle, etc. He's now, Tristan calls them geese. Geeks? Geese. Geese? Yeah, like geese. Okay. You famise a geese. And famise is another word he made up, but you just famise them. They're famiseable. Famise them. He, he made it up. I don't know what that means. You no do know. How many times you You're say a it. chick. You know what it means. No matter how many times you say listen, it, made up word, I don't famise know. Famise is you turn up with your pretty smile. Okay. Oh, oh, I love you. Duh, duh. He gets famise. He gets taken out of uh, the game. He gets famise. Whipped. Yeah, whipped. Like he has no caliber. He's no. No character, right? He's got money, but money is nothing more than an amplifier. Money doesn't change who you are. And the problem with most of these crypto dorks is that they were dorks and now they're rich dorks, but you're still a dork. I'm still a dork. Yeah, money is just an amplifier. I'll give you an example. Lambo pulls up. Yeah. Nerd gets out. Now he's a super nerd. Oh, some tech dork. Da -da. He has Lambo. Who gives a shit? He's a nerd. Yes. Lambo pulls up. Big man gets out. Now he's a mafia boss. So the point is that the Lambo is not what makes you a mafia boss. The Lambo, if you have all the other qualities, will amplify your qualities into that sphere. It's an amplifier. Money's an amplifier. And the point I'm making about wealth and crypto when I insult these guys is that a lot of these guys don't have any of the qualities they need to be amplified. Mm. They don't have anything worth amplifying. If you're a man and you've made a bunch of money on crypto, the, the smartest thing you can possibly do is understand that the traditional paths to wealth, pre-crypto, taught you a lot about being a man. If I had to make millions the old fashioned way, I'd, I'd have to learn to negotiate, I'd have to learn how to handle stress, learn how to work really hard, learn how to network. I'd have to learn, I'd have to learn so many things. These autists don't even learn none of that. Just met a mask, do, do, do. they don't know anything. So my point is that they've missed so many lessons on the path to wealth that wealth used to teach. This is why women used to respect money so much, not just for the money, but you knew you were talking to an ambitious, connected, mm. smart, intelligent man. Yeah. Now you can meet a man with money and he's none of them things. Mm. He's literally none of them. You just call a crypto pump. It's a unique atmosphere we're in. It's temporary, but it's unique. And when I say to the, when I insult the crypto guys, like, look, you have millions and millions of dollars. You need to get some masculine accountability, not to plug, but the war room is the exact kind of thing you need to be in, or you need to go down to a fight gym, et cetera, et cetera. You need to learn all the lessons you missed on your path to wealth. And that's why when I insult crypto guys, that's what I mean, because I'll tell you something. I've been to these crypto events, blah, 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 blah. I'm the only real G. Okay, I, okay, maybe some of them have more hundreds of millions of dollars than me, cool. I'm the only one who, who ain't scared. I'm the only one who'll throw down the street. I'm the only one who, if a gun came in the building, would be looking to take the assailant out. Everyone else would be running like girls. Mm. You think money makes you something? Money doesn't make you anything, especially not in the harsh reality of Earth. In the real harsh realities of Earth, bravery makes you something, not your money. Your MetaMask ain't gonna save you if some dude rolls up at you with a blade and decides to stick it in your fucking neck. It's garbage. Mm. So these men aren't men. They're amplified dorks. And now they're all over Twitter with their little NFTs and their little cartoon faces thinking they're something. I bought this NFT. You still don't matter, G. You still don't matter because you bought an NFT. And, and that's the whole problem with the crypto world is that none of them are actually very impressive people in, the re in real life. Mm. And, and that's why I insult them. But I don't want to insult them in a negative way. I'm trying to inspire you guys. Look, you have the money now. Use that money to upgrade your character. Increase who you are as a man. You know, there's networks and things you can join. There's places you can go where you're going to have to genuinely be held accountable and struggle and suffer and go through some trauma so you can walk with some pride as opposed to looking like a complete geek. There's no need for that. You said something interesting. You said, um, when you're lifting weights in the gym, that's your day off. Yeah, it's my day off. Because when I'm lifting weights in the gym, that's a day off because I spent my entire career getting punched in the face. I, 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 I had 87 professional fights. And for the majority of those fights, I didn't even make any money. It's a couple grand, maybe. I was, I was flying around the world to fight some crazy Kazakh in Armenia for like six, seven Gs coming out with my hand broken, my face busted up. Like, I, I've been to hell and back. And okay, yeah, it was self-inflicted, but genuinely, genuinely, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me. I thank the Lord I spent my 20s engaged in constant combat. Mm. I don't know how there's a full-grown man out here. If you're watching this, how are you a full-grown man past the age of 30 and you've never once had the balls, once ever, to get in the cage in a fair fight against a worthy adversary and you walk the earth without shame? I'd be ashamed as a man if I spent my entire 20s, the height of my masculine powers, mm. the height of my ability, and never once did I have the balls to go and meet somebody in fair combat, ever once. Oh, well, I was busy. Busy doing what? You spent so much time on Pornhub, you're a liar. Never busy. Cowards, all cowards. 
And the crypto community is, amp man, I'm telling you, I go to some of these crypto things, I look around, just say you're all just so famoosable. I could Aikido everybody in this fucking room, no one could even stop me, be a bloodbath. It's a joke. It's a joke. What's the problem with Pornhub? <laughs> well, I don't want to get into a side career I used to run. I don't want to go down that path. But the, the problem with Pornhub, I'm not one of them anti-porn dudes. I know that conservatives are yeah. or whatever, whatever. I don't really care. But like everything in life, if it's consuming your mind and consuming your thoughts, then you have an issue. And this is, this is the world we live in now. There's a whole bunch of these crypto dudes, especially, who came and attract a female with all their money. Mm. Isn't that crazy? They have all the money in well, the world. It, well, you, I think you said, I think it was you that said something interesting. I can't remember who it was, but it was, so, someone said, it doesn't matter how much money a man has because women still fall in love with men that are broke. Completely. No, no. And, and also, you know what the, the biggest thing about money with girls is? Because people have this, this idea that money is going to help you get girls. Let me explain how money in girls works. Tell us. I'll tell you. And I'll let you know if you're right. I'm right, baby. Let's go. Women love spontaneity. That's the first thing. Money facilitates. Women love fun. Money facilitates. Women love a man who's respected. Money facilitates. So money can help with certain of the things that women find attractive. It's very rare, unless she's a hooker or a gold digger, that women are very, very interested in the actual number of how much money you have or spend. Mm. But what women don't want is you lacking the ability to be, spontane to be spontaneous or lacking the ability to be respected because you're broke or to feel like she has FOMO, she's missing out and doing certain things. She can't go certain places that her friends go because you're broke. She doesn't want that, right? So it's not the money in and of itself that attracts her. It's the certain options that it gives you as a man that she can find more attractive. I think that's the, the biggest thing about it. But here's the thing about money most people don't understand is that for the most beautiful women on earth, the reason they don't really respect your money is everybody, they, every guy they talk to has money. Mm. You're never gonna go on a, 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 a date with a broke dude. So every single place you go, you don't pay. So do you actually care how much money that guy really has or how much the dinner really was? Not really, it was just dinner. So the point is that money is not enough to, to get a beautiful woman. It's enough to qualify you to try. Mm. Cause she ain't gonna go with a broke dude. And she's gonna go with one of 10 dudes she can go with and they all have enough money. Maybe more, one is more, one is less, but they all have enough money to give her the basic thing she wants, bit dinner, bit fun, holiday, blah, blah, blah. So it just qualifies you to try. So if money is all you have and you have absolutely no other qualities, you're gonna lose to the dude who has money and, and the other stuff. That's the game. Money is like having arms. Mm. Like a, a chick, a chick's not gonna get with you just for having big arms. But if she can get with a dude, she probably wants a dude to have some arms. Mm. It's one of them. It's like, I'm gonna get with you just for money, but I don't get with a broke guy. So like women don't really think about money that way. They're just like, well, every guy I go on a date with is rich. Right. And men lie, especially rich men. And there's a man with a million, he'll say he has 10. Girl mm. doesn't know. You know what I mean? Like it's very rare you get someone like me with so much quantifiable wealth. <laughs> but, but like I have a fucking $6 million car, Bugatti, all this kind of thing. So with me, it's hard to lie, right? But there's a whole bunch of guys out here who can catch a 400 grand pump. I think can convince a girl he's a multimillionaire for years. I can't confirm there's a caterer in the kitchen. Yeah, I got that, a caterer. That blew my mind. Why? I, I, eat. I walked into the, I walked in to go to the bathroom and then there's this guy just cooking and all this beautiful fruit and of course I've got to eat. I see it. This is what I told you. I'm a man of God. I don't have a woman in my life. I got to eat. I hire a, a catering company. But um, no. But the the point I'm making is that these dudes think if I get money I'll get a chick. No, you won't because you'll get money and then the chick you're after is still going to be dating athletes, superstars, all these dudes. They have money too, bro. You, you think your bored ape is going to impress her? Dork. There's a Dork. term. There's a term which is um. You can do anything to a woman, but you can't bore her. That's absolutely true. So funny. No, but it's true. And and to get a little bit dark, it's true. I knew a girl in Luton who was in an abusive relationship, right? Her man was always hitting her, screaming at her. She was always crying, I want to leave him, blah, 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 blah. Problem was when she finally left him, in fact, he got banged up for drugs. So he went okay. to jail. She got some other guy, a nice guy, and she was a complete prick to this dude. And she was so unhappy. And the problem was, it's very, very hard to be interesting. When your ex is a psycho, the new guy's boring. <laughs> it's true. I can see in her eyes. I'd say, you're, you're going home and you're, you're turning up two hours late and he ain't even screaming and you're bored, aren't you? Well, no, no, no. I was like, you missed the days of the fucking flying plates and shit. Cause it's, cause it's card Women are addicted to drama. You watch TV shows. Women watch serial killers documentaries to relax. Like this is the reality of females. You want drama, you want excitement. It's not a bad thing. You watch the Kardashians, you don't want it smooth. I don't watch any of that stuff. I'm okay. just gonna put that out okay. there. But <laughs> as, as, a, as a generalization, <laughs> of course Leia's different, I'm sorry. But uh, it's okay. as a generalization, the point I'm making is that you're right. Sometimes women are attracted to very, very toxic men because toxic men are not boring. Mm. 
Mm. You, you're, they're never, you're never bored with a nutcase. And, and, and then after a, after a crazy guy, you try and get with a normal guy and you, you end up being very, very bored. So you're right, you can do anything to a woman except bore her. A lot of these dudes are out here treating women like complete shit, but she's staying because she's not bored. And, and it's boring everywhere else in comparison. So it's, it's, just, it's just certainly true as a paradigm, it's true. Girls just wanna have fun, Cindy Lauper. There you go. Nailed it. You said something interesting as well. See, I, I clearly follow everything. I'm a fan, like I, I respect the hustle fully. High five. Fully respect the hustle. May not agree and then, you know, wanna live the same kind of lifestyle, but I respect it. You said something which was, um, when you wake up in the morning, you don't ask yourself if you're happy. Oh, completely. But what's funny about that was a lot of your, um, a lot of that kind of like masculine, um, like self-help. Yeah. Um, it's for men, yeah. but as a woman, I find that really helpful. Because you said, because you said, um, women just want to be happy. They yeah. just want to wake up and feel happy. Yeah. But you said, no, wake up and just, what did you say? Wake up at, yeah, so the, have my, I created something or am I doing? Yeah, yeah. So, so the basic premise is that the paradigm of happiness is, is completely misunderstood. I believe that, because people always say to me, oh, well, you have all this money tape, but are you happy? I say if I'm gonna be like, no, like, like I guess, I guess what they're hoping I'm gonna do. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the bus. No, but the point is the whole paradigm of happiness is, is largely misunderstood. And we talk about happiness in society as if it's the most important metric. And I'd actually argue that it's not an important metric at all. And it's also really truly amazing how what you define in your mind, the limits you set in your mind of what happy is and what happy isn't becomes very, very true. So I watched a very interesting documentary once about colors. And it was colors. A, a colors. Yeah. And it was a tribe in Africa that used different words to describe colors. So to them, blue and yellow are the same color, same word, right? And also these two very different shades of green. And I'm talking about like grass and a leaf, like basically the same shade of, shade of green. They're completely different colors. So when they showed them blue and yellow and they said, can you tell the difference? They're like, no, it's the same color. I can't tell the difference between the blue and the yellow. Well, they couldn't the see color. the difference. They, they couldn't see it even because in their, in their mind, it had one word. So because they grew up their whole life and it had one word, that those two colors within that spectrum to them, it's just like, it's one color. They couldn't see the difference. Just like we'd say different variants of pink. It's all pink. Mm -hmm. They couldn't really see the difference. Whereas the two very different shades of green, they're like, oh yeah, that's that, that's that. Uh -huh. Oh, they're completely different. So the point is their own mental blocks, their own mental barriers where they had mentally decided to put the brakes controlled their reality. And people often talk about being happy and what they do is they talk about being happy in the same way a child in their very giddyish Christmas morning happiness. You know, like, hee hee hee, I'm happy, I'm happy. That's never gonna be long lasting. That's gonna be temporary. If you were like that all the time, you wouldn't even get anything done, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't even be a mature adult. So the idea that you're out here searching for that feeling permanently is asinine and is immature. That is certainly happy, sure. But I've changed the paradigm of where happiness is. For me, anything above distraught is happy. Mm. Besides three or four monumentally destructive events that are gonna happen throughout my life, like a loss of family member or something, unless I really, really feel down, I'm happy. Okay. So if I wake up, it's not I'm thinking if I'm happy or not. If I'm not devastated, I'm happy. It's, it's black or white. If it's not black, it's white. So even if I wake up and I'm furious and I'm stressed and I'm pissed off and I've got much to do, I'm still happy. I've decided I'm happy. My happiness barrier isn't this little giddy-ish at the top. My happiness is everything besides feeling distraught. That's how I've designed it in my mind. So I describe myself as a happy person and I, and I don't really put much merit on my feeling of the day. I've got things to do, I'm an adult, I get my shit done regardless of whether I'm super happy or slightly less happy. I'm still happy and I still perform and that's it as a whole. So when I meet guys who go, oh, I wanna be more happy. I'm like, bro, that is a stupid, destructive way to try and live your life. To constantly self-analyze and compare your happiness to how happy you were at another period and how you're gonna get happy again, trying to get to the top one percentile of happiness. It's, it's stupid. It's not real, right? It's, you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, I agree with you, but I think what's funny is that a lot of this um, kind of advice is given to men. And you'll say like a woman doesn't need it, but yeah. I find a lot of value in this kind of advice. That's yeah. I prefer men. So they say that women give really bad advice, right? Yeah. They say they give terrible advice. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree or disagree, but I, I seek out advice that men give to other men for myself. Good, good. Because I think that a lot of the advice that men give to other men is gonna be harsher and more logical mm. and less emotionally led. But, but I say this all the time to guys who message me and saying they're not happy. I say two things. I say, firstly, you shouldn't be measuring or be concerned with how happy you are. Mm. Shouldn't be something that's in your mind or something you're even thinking about, right? You've got other things to think about and other things to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is, wait, wait.
So the first thing, the fact that you will sit there and self-analyze yourself to determine how happy you are out of a score of 100 is already a mental failure. Mm. That's a failure. You should be busy. It yeah. shouldn't cross your mind. The fact you have time to sit there and go, how happy am I today? Mm. Oh, I'm only this much. Maybe I should be happier. That, that, that's already a mess up. The second thing is, and this is the truth, most of you, in fact, the large majority of you, don't deserve to be happy. Why? Because they haven't done the work it requires to be happy. Yeah. You're not a man of genuine excellence in every human metric. You don't deserve to be happy. You're sitting at your computer with your board ape and your NFTs and $4 million, but you're fat and you're boring and you stink and you expect yourself to be happy. You don't deserve to be happy. You don't deserve it. You haven't worked for it. Mm. Beauty lies on top of the mountain, my friends. You have to climb it. You have to get all the way up there to see the peak and it's amazing view. Let me tell you something. I'm happy because all I've done is suffer. That's all I've ever done is suffer. This is how I got here. Suffer. My life's been nothing but suffering and trauma. That's how I got here. That's why my, that's why my worldview is so brilliant. That's how I can wake up and as long as no one has a gun to my head, I am happy because I have suffered. You, ladies, and gentlemen haven't suffered enough and if you haven't suffered you're never going to be happy happiness lies atop a mountain if yeah. it's just laying all over the floor and anyone can pick it up it has no value people's entire mental model is skewed you, look you're a crypto guy right you believe in nfts nfts the whole point of them is that there's one it's the scarcity that provides the value if things are not scarce there's no value to it yeah right so it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter if it's financial it doesn't matter if it's even a good body right the fact that a guy has big arms the reason that has value is because it's rare if every dude naturally had big arms by default it wouldn't have a value so you're talking about happiness as if it should just be laid all over the floor if everyone could pick up happiness without trying you still wouldn't be happy because it wouldn't have value and you'd be aiming for a new you'd be looking for a new attention of happiness you'd be mm -hmm. looking for something else you just raised the paradigm and people who are out here trying to find happiness without trauma and suffering, those are the guys who get addicted to drugs, alcohol, all this crap, because they're trying to find temporary happiness. You're going to find happiness through pain. That's where happiness comes from as a man. And I'm not, I know you say you take some of my advice, et cetera, et cetera. I love but, male advice. Yeah, perfect. But it's the struggle yeah. that adds the value to things. The reason I'm going to love my cars so much is because I had nothing. And now I have them. Walk nine miles. I walk nine miles. Now I get to do it in a Lambo. It's beautiful. If I was born into money and was just given a Lambo for my birthday, I wouldn't even appreciate it. Yeah. That's the reality. So most of you men out here don't even deserve happiness. You come to me talking about happiness you don't deserve. And you know you don't deserve it because you're a coward and you're lazy and you're weak. You don't deserve happiness. It's good you're unhappy. That's your own mind telling you you need to do more. Because if you were genuinely, genuinely making an impact on the world and exerting your entire masculine force out into the universe, if you were genuinely doing that, you'd find happiness. Mm. So if you're sitting there feeling depressed, it's because you know you're lazy. You know you're not working very hard. I don't want to rant on your podcast. No, it's good. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It really is just like the whole idea that like good doesn't exist without evil, right? So Completely. good doesn't exist without bad. Yin and yang. 100%. Yin and yang, light and dark. We, we don't want to feel, what's the exact saying? We all love the sun, we don't want to see the rain, but you can't have a rain. Uh, no, I've not heard this I can't remember. We all love the sun, we don't want to feel any pain, but you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Something like Something that. Like Something, like that. Something like that. But no, this is as old as human time, right? And the whole people, especially men, if you have this paradigm in your mind that you should just be happy by default without trying, without working, without any kind of struggle, without any negatives in your life, and you're just gonna be a happy person and you're always just gonna be laughing and giggling in the top 1%, that's asinine, mm -hmm. it's not real. And it's a, it's a stupid mentality to have. I don't care how happy you are. You have work to do. If any man comes to me and he's looking for guidance, I say, I don't, I, I don't really care how happy you are because you're fat. Mm -hmm. You got work to do. Come talk to me when you have a six pack. Otherwise, I don't care. You have too much to get done to be talking about happiness. Most of you men out here have so much to get done before you talk about happiness. It's amazing to me how little work the majority of people out here are doing. Mm. I, like you're a full grown man living in a transitionary period of, of humanity where the entire financial system is broken and trillions of dollars are created from the sky and you don't have a single million? You don't have one? They're all, they're everywhere. Like how are you gonna be a full grown man and not be a millionaire? Like, are you dumb? How many, how many, just a golf on a side bit, how many millions are uh, too many millions? Because when we met in London, something that I haven't forgotten, which I thought was hilarious, was you and your brother said to me, look, 20 million is good, right? I don't think you need more than 20 million in life. If we have 22 million, we have an emergency meeting and we sit down and say, how can we blow those two million? Yeah, completely. So no, I think 20, <laughs> 20, it, we've raised the bar. 20, I thought it was funny. I yeah, was 20 funny. to 30 million is enough, right? Anything right. above that, I believe it, the money no, no longer has value and it's better to spend it on a human experience. That's right. what I believe, because 
If you have 30 million or 40 million, your life's not gonna change. Mm -hmm. If you have 30 million or 100 million, your life's not gonna change. Your life's the same. So I'd rather just spunk all that money on human experience and amazing things and try to get the best out of the physical world we live in. That's that's what I personally believe in. So that's enough to, to survive. But it also depends, there's some people who are out here, I see a lot of crypto guys and a lot of other people, they're talking about generational wealth, I'm gonna save my Bitcoin, that they really want their children to be rich. I don't want my kids to be rich. That's another mindset I have. I really want to die taking most of my money with me. I do not want rich children. Really? Absolutely not. I agree not. with that, but what do you, I understand why it's obvious, but yeah. in terms of your money, what would you do with it? You don't, don't just give it, I mean, no, you don't I'm just give it. it to some institution, some bullshit nah, charity. No, 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 nothing like that. What so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna financially incentivize my children. So yes. they're gonna have the ability to be, so when I used to have to run to the gym, and suffer and, did it and fight. And at the end of it, I still didn't have food. My boy's gonna go through all that and he's gonna fight and then I'm gonna give him some money. But still he has to suffer, yeah. still he has to fight, still he has to win, still he has to run to the gym and back, et cetera, et cetera. The worst thing you can do for a child is raise them rich. And, and so that's the worst thing you can possibly ever do. So I have no interest in that whole generational wealth crap. But yeah, Wait, I, but find it, I find do, it, I find it. But you I, do wanna build generational wealth. You, you just don't want them to have an easy life. You correct. want them to, yeah. you don't want them to suffer exactly how you did. Cor I want them to suffer. I want them to suffer a lot. A lot. Yeah, but maybe in a maybe in a slightly different way. Right. But they're, I'm going to make sure they go through a lot of pain yeah. because it what makes a man. It was it's what makes him a character. Right. It's extremely important. But I find it. I really find it remarkable when I meet men who say they work hard. And I'm not trying to be. I'm not. Listen. I'm not being elitist. I'm not being a horrible guy here because I'm from the streets. Right. I'm from the ghetto. I'm not talking about if you're a taxi driver or whatever. Whatever. And you've been a taxi driver your whole life. I'm not trying to sit here and shit on you. I'm not trying to do that. I'm saying that, especially if you're a younger man and you have, you have access to the internet and you're paying attention to the things that are going on in the world and you do your studying and you're not hard to do some work, blah, blah, blah. If you're not afraid of work, I find it amazing there's guys out here who are still broke. Really? How can you be poor in the modern society that we live in? Like, it, 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 there's money everywhere. There is. It's literally yeah. everywhere. Like, it, so when I see a dude and he's like, oh yeah, man, I'm broke, da, 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 I just look at him and go- You're not trying hard you're enough. You're not trying hard enough. Yeah. You're, you're simply not trying hard enough. I can do it from a single mother, effectively, from a Luton council estate to, to ultra high net worth individual. Then I, I refuse to accept that others can't do it. And people will say, oh yeah, but you did this or you had this, blah, 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 perhaps. You know, but I don't, I don't operate within that realm. I'm not gonna be softer on anyone else than I was on myself. Of course. If I held myself to such a crazy high standard and I was so accountable and so difficult and so hard on myself, why am I gonna be soft on you? I was extremely hard on myself. I'd go sparring for four hours and if I got hit once, I was furious. You, you wanna me. be hit more? No, I don't wanna get hit. No, you don't get hit. Ever. Okay. Okay. I wanna just whoop ass. Oh, sorry, I don't wanna get okay. touched, yeah. right? I, I got hit once, I couldn't, I, I couldn't sleep for okay. days. I, I was absolutely a perfectionist, right? And then there's dudes out here who are just, just sloppy. Right. Just sloppy with their entire life. They're just sloppy. And they're like, oh yeah, well, you know, just wear the mask. They, they deserve they, what's coming. Right, they deserve what's coming to them. Slavery, they're amateurs. We live in, we, we are li really living in a paradigm shift where the professionals of life, and when I say the professional, I'll explain what that means in a minute, but the professionals of life are gonna genuinely excel where all of you amateurs are gonna fail. Most people, most men especially, they live their life like complete amateurs. I don't understand how they even function. They don't know their own passport number. They haven't memorized it. Men aside though, like people in general. They're amateurs. I, I, sometimes I do wonder how people have gotten to certain ages and how they're even functioning. Yeah. Getting offended by very simple things. I'm just like, how, like how have you got into an age, lived your whole life, how on earth are you functioning if that's gonna upset you? Absolutely. I amateurs. don't understand how that even exists. Amateurs, and that's how they stay inside the matrix. Right. You need to exert a degree of professionalism that's what I was saying earlier about the crypto kids. If you have money, great, fantastic, you've ticked that off. But you, there's a whole bunch of other areas of professionalism you need to excel in. You can give me any firearm on the planet right now, I'm, I'm going to hit the target. You can, give me any, you can give me any car in the world, basically, I'll outrun the cops. Like, I'm that guy. You need to become that guy. Mm. And you know, it's practice. You need to go do it. But these dudes just don't do it. We're suffering from cowardice. We talk about all the problems in the world. It's easy to talk about them all. But you can narrow them all down to the exact same thing. Cowardice. Cowardice. The, the masculine hunting. cowardice. All of it. All of this is masculine cowardice. That's right. all it is. And and man, I see full grown men out here like wearing a mask. You're scared of you're scared of air? You're scared of air? Bro. It's the biggest dating filter there is. <laughs> I'm just like walk around Miami, oh he's got a mask. <laughs> The medicine, Gosh. the medicine. Sorry, 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 sorry. The medicine. The medicine. Let's, let's speak that. The medicine. The medicine. Yeah, but it's it's incredible. It really is incredible to me that, that that's the paradigm shift we live in. And 
And it's amazing to me that some of the things I say are seen as so controversial, because I don't think I say anything that controversial. I'm saying, look, have some balls, do what you want to do, stick yeah. to your, your imperatives as a man, try and get rich, and try and, and try to some degree live with a life of freedom. That's all I'm trying to say. See, I really agree with you, and I, I don't think anything's that controversial, but before we started this, you said that you do piss some people off. Uh, no, I piss I don't really off. understand why. I've got to be honest, I actually don't, because I don't think anything you've said is unfair. But, but what I do is, see, I am, I am a, a soundboard. And what I do is I annoy the majority of men because if you're going to talk to me or listen to me or compare your life to mine, nearly any man on the planet is going to, to a degree, be inferior. So you need to humble yourself. This is the truth. Men need to humble themselves because especially like, uh, we keep talking crypto, crypto, right? Yeah. I'm rich. Yeah, but I'm also rich and I'm also tall and strong and smart and I can kick the shit out of you. Yeah. And I've got all these kids and I've got political connections and I'm living a life of freedom and da, 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 da. like you're rich, but you're afraid to go outside because someone's going to rob you. So it's very difficult for men to compare themselves to me and not take, to some degree take an L, so they have to humble themselves. So what happens when I talk to people is either they go, this is inspirational, I wanna learn from this guy, he has so much to teach, he's right, I need to become a professional, I need to be yeah. well-rounded, I need to join his network, I need to know the people he knows, I need to have all these assets and these these uh, connections, et cetera, et cetera. Or people go, ah, he's just so arrogant, he's crazy, and I'm sitting at home with my wife, and I raise my kids, and he's crazy. But no, I'm not crazy. That's just a defense mechanism. It's defense mechanism. It's cope. That's cope. It's hard cope. It's cope. And, a lo and, and lots of dudes have cope. It's kind of amazing. There's also something that's primal amongst men that women probably don't really know about. But as a man, when you meet another man who you know can kick the shit out of you, it, it bothers you. Mm. Even if they don't want to admit it. So even if I meet a dude and I'm really polite, I'm like, hey, bro, nice to meet you. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Part of them's kind of like, oh, fuck this guy. Oh, no. Because they know I'll mess him up. He knows I'll mess him up. And it's, it's something intrinsic about masculinity. It's kind of like when some girls hate girls who are prettier than them, not all girls, but some girls like, oh, fuck that, but she thinks she's pretty. Right, right, It's the right, same right. kind of thing, but it's yeah, just yeah, violence yeah. related, right? So there's that aspect. Ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous, but it's primal. And you can it tie, is. and you can also tie into the fact that they don't like people who are richer than them, right? Yep. Men don't like men who are richer than them. They survival, don't, yeah, survival. Yeah, yeah. So, so when they meet me and I'm more important than them and richer than them, I can beat the shit out of them, and then I tick all these boxes, they just sit and go, oh, he's, a, he's crazy, I don't like him, and I don't want him on my podcast, blah, blah, blah. I've had people record podcast me and refuse to put them out what did you say the same shit i'm saying now really? the truth the truth you want you want like more like inappropriate or harsher or not really not really because i don't think you said anything too bad look i don't I, think so I, I, I don't know maybe they're worried you go down i go down because i've just said i agree with everything you just said basically so. see you in jail literally so Yeehaw, i'll get us out i got phone calls i got phone calls don't worry sold about me out, sold me yeah out. i'll get it so, um, okay, what is the final goal then? Because every day you're always like, you know, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm surviving. You know, you don't take a day, you do take days off, but it's not like a day off, right? Yeah. Um, like, like we said earlier, even lifting weights is your day off, Correct. right? Like for me, lifting weights is lifting weights. It's yeah. not a day off. So what's the final goal? Like, where do you see yourself in like 20 years? That's a good, that's a good question. And I believe I have a duty to protect the bloodline. I have a duty to my last name. It was instilled within me. My Tate. father, yeah, Tate. My father is one of the greatest men on the planet. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, which now promotes me to the greatest man on the planet. So I have- What I about have, your brother? Are you equally greatest man or? Yeah, we share the, we share the we responsibility. Share the title. We share the title. So I have a lot of work to do. And I think that the duty I have to my bloodline, it depends the exact path I'm gonna take. I don't know if I'm gonna have 20 sons with 20 women. We're gonna find one woman who might give me two or three, et cetera. But I think the family's a beautiful thing, but the nuclear family as it's told within this trad, con, conservative, da, 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 that's garbage. If you were to ask me now to design my ideal life, like if I could just design it, I'd have three or four sons in Moscow, three or four sons in Kazakhstan, maybe two or three sons in Mongolia, you know? My three chicks, inshallah, my three wives. And uh, they'd all be training hard, becoming warriors of earth, all carry the last name Tate. And in the future, as much as people go, Tate, you can't do that. You can't have kids with all these women. You can't do that, blah, blah, blah. In the future, when the dystopian, when the machines arrive, when the Terminators turn up and you're like, where's John Connor? Where's John Connor? Oh, he was an act of fiction, but there is a man. There is a man who does exist. There's a man who's real. He's from deep in Mongolia and his name's Emery Andrew Tate the fifth. And he's gonna rise up because even I am human. I know it's hard to believe. Even I have human, I'm human, right? Yeah. And there's limits to my power. Time is in the fire is in which we all burn. Even I will get old. But when I am old, I need to make sure I've done my job because it would be a detriment. It would be unfair to humanity for me to not create clones of myself to protect the future. So that's my plan. My plan is to protect the future via my offspring. That's my plan. Okay. Plug whatever you're doing. So The War Room, yep. follow him on Twitter. Yep. He's also got a great um, YouTube. 
where you are very unfiltered. Um, there's a hilarious thing about how, why women should cook and men shouldn't cook, <laughs> which, by the way, as somebody who's like running her own show, yeah. I, I understand. Am, like, am I right? Because opportunity costs. Do Completely. You know what but like again, gender aside, like I like cooking. You know, opportunity costs. Massive the amount of time I waste cooking. It's insane. The amount of business calls I could have fit in in that cooking period. Completely, completely. I, I <laughs> yeah, it's, the YouTube is at Tate Speech. Check it out. But I, I have a, I say some things that sound outlandish. Like if you're broke, you should never cook. And people are like, what are you talking about? But it's opportunity cost. You ain't got time to waste. That's I know so broke, true. I know broke dudes out here cooking breakfast, cooking lunch, cooking dinner. You're wasting how many hours? Of, no wonder you're broke. Like cooking should be a luxury for the ultra rich. Like yeah. either that or hire a chef. You got stuff to do with your life. You're out here broke as a joke, sitting there with a frying pan. You think is that you're gonna, that's how you're, that's your plan to get rich? These people have no no understanding of earth, that's true. no understanding of the world. So yeah, cooking is a massive opportunity cost. If you're a man out here and you cook meals and you're not a millionaire, you're fucked up. You're fucking up your life. So stop. So Tate Speech is the YouTube. At Cobra Tate is the Instagram. Twitter. Who knows how long I'll be around. Of Wudan. What is of Wudan, by the way? Because I am of Wudan. Wudan. I don't, I don't know what that is. You don't know. I, I come from Wudan. Again. Wudan I, is a mystical mountain. Right. I've existed. Can't you tell Leia that I'm far too intelligent for yes, the age? Yes, yes, I'm yes. I'm far yes, too yes. intelligent for the age 35. I've been. Ex I've existed for 5,000 years. Okay. I'm a reincarnation of the Do you actually believe you're reincarnated? I don't know if I should say yes or no. So you say the truth? It's not so much about believing. Belief has nothing to do with it. It has okay. nothing to do with belief. Okay. The, the, the fact is that I am the last of the warrior class. And the, my, whatever occupies me, whatever inspires me to act in the way I act, right? You say, this, I don't have divine purpose. I say divine purpose. Whatever it is, it's ancient, okay. right? And for 5,000 years, whatever fires inside of my soul has wandered the, the, the forests of Wudan in battle against <laughs> evil. I the ninja shogunate. You understand? Understood, yeah. Okay. Mm. So, all right. Following. So there was a, in, in ancient times, there was a ninja spirit, which is engaging against the, the evil samurai. And that is the, the spirit, which is inside of me today. So oh, I Wudan. descend from Wudan. 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 And, and when I talk about the bloodline, it is my job to instill the same warrior spirit in my offspring. Yes. I will not have sons who are too busy buying NFTs and saying, oh, I made a little bit of money and have skinny little arms and go to crypto conventions and be dorks. I will not have nerds as children. I refuse to have a nerd carry the lame tape. If my son is a nerd, one of us has to die, him or me, and I'll challenge him to mortal combat. Jesus Christ. Do you mean that? Uh, that's a bit of an exaggeration, uh, but it sounds cool, right? It does. Sounds cool. I understand it. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for chatting with me. You're welcome. It's always really fascinating to hear your perspective on things. And yeah, I appreciate it. And I, honestly, I really respect the hustle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, we'll see you next week.